O come, O come, Emmanuel, God with us. Welcome, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Thank you for worshipping with us today. Let us prepare our hearts and homes for the arrival of Christ, who brings comfort and joy to all. This is the second week of Advent. We light two candles on the Advent wreath. You might also want to light two candles as we begin our prayers. This week, we light the second candle for the prophets, in particular, John the Baptist, who prophesied in the wilderness about the coming of the Messiah. As we light these two candles, we sing, Advent candles tell their story. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and, and also, also with, with you. you. A voice cries out in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, purify our hearts and minds, that when your Son, Jesus Christ, comes again as Judge and Savior, we may be ready to receive him, who is our Lord, and our God. Amen. Let us hear the ancient stories of God's people from Scripture, not as events in the past, but as stories that shine light into God's activity in our lives today. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has sold her term, that her panic is paid that she has received from the Lord's hand, double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way 
of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough place a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cries out, and I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass weathers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass weathers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, held of good tidings, lift up your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, head of good tidings, lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with mighty, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. Word of justice, Alleluia. Come to dwell here. Come, Lord Jesus. Word of mercy, Alleluia. Live among us. Come, Lord Jesus. Word of Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, O Jesus Christ. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare the way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptised by him in the River Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than me is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptised you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. 
This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the one God, source, word, and spirit. Amen. Advent. Advent calendars, Advent wreaths, Advent candles. But what does Advent actually mean? Well, Advent is also the first part of the word adventure. Adventure. So we could think of it this way. This season, we are all going on an adventure. Shall we? The word Advent actually means arrival or coming, as in we are all looking forward to the arrival of Christ at Christmas. The words of Mark's Gospel that we just heard start with the words, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So it's not only that Jesus will arrive at Christmas, this is about the arrival of a new beginning for all of God's people. And Mark calls that good news, or in Greek, gospel. Because when he looked at the world around him, it did not seem to be the way that God had intended. And so they needed a new beginning to find their good news. And what about us today? Does our world reflect God's ways? Not really. Now, for some people, the solution is to destroy whatever is causing the problem, whether that's certain people or a country or an issue. They think that if they can somehow get rid of those people, they could get rid of the problem. But how is that good news? Other people seem to think that the world's problems can be fixed by pretending that we still live in the past, the good old days, even though the past wasn't perfect either. Mark's Gospel declares that God's approach is different. Instead of going backwards or tearing things down, the arrival of God's Son, Jesus, is a new beginning. God has given all of us a fresh start. On any adventure, preparation is essential. Food, water, clothing, shelter, other supplies. It takes careful planning. You know, they say there is no such thing as bad weather, just the wrong clothes. So it's lucky for John the Baptist that he lived in the Middle East and not in Belgium in December while he was wearing camel's hair and a leather belt, because that would kind of be the wrong clothes for today. John's clothes were the same as what the prophet Elijah had worn. And for both John and Elijah, this wasn't about the latest fashion trends. It was a symbol of repentance. But not of their own repentance. Repentance on behalf of all God's people. What we wear matters too. It says something about who we are and what we believe. And St. Paul recommends, put on the breastplate of righteousness. Now, he's not suggesting that we pretend to be pious so that we can hide our true thoughts and feelings. Righteousness in the Bible is always about treating others, ourselves, and all of creation in a way that reflects God's love. But when we're going on an adventure, it doesn't do any good to change our clothes after we've reached our destination. We need to do it from the very beginning. Clothing ourselves in righteousness, in loving relationships, 
This is what will protect us and keep us safe and warm on our Advent journey. In terms of food, John the Baptist had a rather strange diet, but this was also part of his preparations for the arrival of the Messiah. The Psalms tell us that God's word tastes sweeter than honey. And so the same is true for our Advent journey. Junk food and snacks won't give us the strength we need. The wild honey of God's word will keep us going day after day. God's messenger didn't appear by giving a speech on television or the internet. He didn't hold a press conference in the center of town or show up in the corner office of a billion dollar company. It was in the wilderness, in the wild, in the unfamiliar, the unknown, and the uncomfortable wilderness. Because God's messengers have a habit of always appearing in places that we least expect, far away from the centers of power. And so the same was true for John. The political, military, and religious authorities were all in Jerusalem, the place of power. And meanwhile, John was baptizing people in the Jordan River, far outside the reach of their authority. Now, every type of authority is about control, but John was not baptizing people to get control over them. His goal was to set them free from the power of sin. And when people went out to hear and see John, his surroundings showed that God's forgiveness was the complete opposite of control. It was wild, it was open, and it was free to everyone. And so the message is, God's forgiveness is like that too. It's like an ever-flowing stream washing away all our wrongs and carrying them out of sight. Our Advent adventure takes us away from anything that seeks to oppress or control us, and it leads us into unfamiliar territory. That's what the word repentance means, turning away from the powers that control our lives and towards the freedom, the wild freedom of a future where our past mistakes no longer hold us back. And when we stand in the midst of God's forgiveness like a river, it washes us clean. The last step on every journey is coming back home. But if we've done it right, if we've had a real adventure, then we are changed. We might come back to a familiar place, but we are different than before. We return with new stories, new ideas, new ways of looking at the world. Because Advent is meant to change us. Because that's how we prepare God's way in the world. And when Jesus arrives at Christmas, and he will arrive with or without services in our church, with or without big family gatherings, with or without exchanging gifts, Jesus will arrive at Christmas this year just like he always does. But when he arrives, this will not be the end of God's story. As Mark says, this will be just the beginning. And for that we can say, thanks be to God. Amen. We have heard God's word. Now let it change us to reflect his light in our own lives. Through prayer and song, we ask for the help of the Holy Spirit.
let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Watchful at all times, let us pray. Let us pray for strength to stand with confidence before our Maker and Redeemer, that God may bring in his kingdom with justice and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Rejoice, rejoice. we may establish among the nations his scepter of righteousness. Let us pray to the Lord. That we may seek Christ in the scriptures and recognise him in the breaking of the bread. We pray especially for our bishops Robert and David, our chaplain Stephen, Pastor Yoyan, Pastor intern Sarah Jane, and all who have ministries in your name at St John's. In our diocese in Europe, we pray for the fellowship with the German Protestant Church. We pray for the work of the Mission to Seafarers here in the Port of Ghent, as well as the General Secretary of the International Christian Maritime Association. Let us pray to the Lord. Hearted, restore the sick and raise up all who have fallen. We pray especially for the leprosy control and health systems and the missions work in Bangladesh. In our communities we pray for Pierre Alain, Bridget, Elizabeth, Christopher, Carlos, Alain, Christine, Thomas, Isabel, Kingsley, Pants, Pete, Brian, Jan, Jacqueline, Andre, John, Dominique, Gert, Patrick, Ingrid, Danny, and those we hold close and dear in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. coming may dawn on all who live in darkness and the shadow of death. Let us pray to the Lord.
saints in light, we may shine forth as lights for the world. Let us pray to the Lord. ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of our Heavenly Father. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. As we anticipate the coming of our Savior, let us pray with confidence in whatever language we choose, as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And then lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
We go now with God's blessing, carrying his light and love in all we say and do. With love and compassion, come, Lord Jesus. With judgment and mercy, come, Lord Jesus. In power and glory, come, Lord Jesus. In wisdom and truth, come, Lord Jesus. Holy One, make us steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.